escort service was not so much about sex as it was about running a successful business. But to others, prostitution is about sex, about the right of adult women to choose for themselves what they want to do with their bodies. In 1972, Norma Jean Almodovar got a job as a meter maid in the Hollywood division of the Los Angeles Police Department. She was 21. It wasn't long before Norma Jean earned the nickname Bionic Arm because she was writing so many parking tickets. She was also, by her own account, mixing work with pleasure rather aggressively. I had sex with so many cops because I was trying to find a cop that knew how to make love, but cops think making love is like using a gun. All they have to do is take aim and shoot. While Norma Jean was seeking pleasure, some of her superiors at the LAPD, she says, hinted strongly that having sex with fellow cops could, in fact, have other benefits. It was pointed out to me that if I would perform certain sex acts with the right people, that this could be very good for me politically and in my career. And I thought that was wrong. I said, you know, well, that's kind of doing it, you know, for other consideration. Isn't that prostitution? Norma Jean uh, has a very active imagination. You know, maybe some of the things occurred, but uh, there can never be any proof of it one way or another. Almodovar claims she saw evidence of other unsavory police behavior, such as cops demanding sex from prostitutes. You've had the police who, who in the name of protecting these women, can extort them into acts of sex. You know, and it's not just an issue of they're not getting paid. It's, a, it's an issue of where the cop is saying, you're going to do this to me now, or I'm going to arrest you. Fed up with the corruption and hypocrisy she says she found in the LAPD, in 1982, Norma Jean decided it was time to find another, more honest career. I knew some prostitutes, and I looked at their life, and I saw that it wasn't stressful like mine was on the police department. Now, my first idea of prostitution was just that it was a way to make a political statement. You know, I'd rather be a whore than work for the LAPD. But when I got into the work, and I actually found out what the work was like, contrary to what I had been raised to believe, it was quite an enjoyable job and I regretted that I hadn't done this 10 years earlier. It wasn't just the sex that Norma Jean says she enjoyed, it was the companionship, especially with her long-term customers. I find it very therapeutic, very healing, very nurturing for me because instead of being a very quick fix for someone that needs to have sexual release, I'm able to talk to someone, I'm able to listen to what their problems are and I'm able to interact with them for a period of time. The money wasn't bad either. Going right back then was $200 an hour. You know, and then it's since gone up, and of course I had clients that paid more than that. Where else could I work making $200 an hour? Like the Mayflower Madam, Norma Jean was hardly worried about the police catching her. I saw their attitude towards call girls. Even though they did arrest women on the street, that was more or less for being in a public place. They had a very cavalier attitude towards it. And I did not think that I would get any kind of um, legal trouble over it. But then one day in June 1983, Norma Jean slipped up. She phoned a traffic control officer whom she knew from her days on the force. Norma Jean told the woman how happy she was in her new profession and mentioned that she was writing a book about L.A. police corruption. During the conversation, according to Norma Jean, the traffic control officer, a stout woman in her early 50s named Penny Iskro, confided a deeply held secret that she fantasized of being a cold girl herself. It is something that women do think about because it is a very erotic kind of fantasy. Not that every woman could do it, but it is a nice fantasy that you could be seductive and the man would pay you a lot of money for your sexual charms. But unfortunately, Penny wasn't ever going to be able to fulfill her fantasy. <gasps> I'm sorry, but it wasn't going to happen. Or was it? Not long after this conversation, Norma Jean met a new client who preferred women older and larger than herself. I suddenly had this brilliant idea, just like, you know, the little light bulb goes off, you know, in the cartoon. That's exactly, I, wow, he likes taller older women. Penny is taller and older than me. Well, she's ugly, but I um, mean, you know, <laughs> she's taller and older. So um, I thought, well, this is a great way for me to fill her fantasy. Norma Jean called Penny back and offered her the chance to be called girl for a night with this new client. But as it turned out, 
when he was anything but a friend. She reported the conversations to the LAPD. The police began taping their subsequent phone calls. She called back a few days later, and she said, well, what's this all about? What would she have to do? And I said, well, nothing you haven't done in a normal adult relationship. And she said, is there money involved? I said, yes. Penny kept asking questions, and Norma Jean got suspicious. So she called off the date. But it was too late. The cops already had their tapes. The next day, seven officers, guns drawn, arrived at Norma Jean's door and arrested her for pandering. The crime of pandering, arranging for a prostitute to service a customer, is hard to prove. So vice squads often gather evidence through undercover investigation. Often police are working with prostitutes who want to break free of their abusive pimps. But as prostitutes, they may be less than credible on the witness stand. In Norma Jean's case, the prosecutor had a different problem. He worried that a jury might have a hard time believing that any madam would bother trying to sell the sexual services of Penny Iskro. A normal jury would look and say, somebody that looks like a linebacker for the Rams, 54 years old, being pandered out as a prostitute, does that make sense? To this day, Norma Jean contends that the LAPD busted her because she was planning to expose corruption in her book a draft of which was confiscated by the arresting officers. At the time, I was given a couple of offers by the district attorney's office, and that was, you know, if I'd plead guilty, you know, they would let me get probation, even though the law said it was mandatory that I go to prison. And I said, hell no, <laughs> you know, you guys stole my book. I'm not going to, you know, plead guilty to anything. I want it my day in court. The authorities say they took the manuscript to verify evidence of her alleged pandering. It was later returned, and years later, published. In the meantime, Norma Jean did get her day in court. She stood trial in September 1984. Penny Iskro was the star prosecution witness. What she said was that she had used the kind of conversation she did with me in order to try to entrap me into believing that she was my friend. And then she outright admitted that the reason she did this was to stop me from writing an expose on Los Angeles police. The prosecution played the tapes of Norma Jean's phone conversations with Penny. Listening to Norma Jean talk to Penny and convince Penny that everything would be all right, not to worry about it, it was just a simple act, and she could make all this money. That is what a pander is. The jury agreed and found Almodovar guilty. California law has a minimum mandatory prison term of three years for pandering. But the judge said that would be cruel and unusual punishment for a first offender. So he gave Norma Jean three years probation. She hit the talk show circuit. Alba Dovar also discovered a passion for politics and in 1986 ran for lieutenant governor of California on the libertarian ticket. Her slogan, sell your body, not your soul, and cut the red tape. She lost, but received 88,000 votes. District Attorney Ira Reiner, unamused by all the publicity, decided to appeal her sentence. It is not cruel and inhumane to send a panderer to state prison. You ask, why is this the law? Ask the courts. Ask the legislature. Ask the citizens. They don't want prostitution going on out there. A California appeals court ruled in March 1987 that Norma Jean should be resentenced. Despite protests from her supporters, she was slapped with a three-year prison term. I'm sorry that this is what our justice system is like, that they feel that I'm a danger to society. Alma Dovar served 18 months at the California Institute for Women. She still does not believe that pandering enticing women to engage in prostitution should be considered a crime. But in fact, American justice considers those who pander as more serious criminals than the prostitutes themselves. Glenn Ackerman is the head of the LAPD vice unit. We're not really concerned about individual prostitutes. The madam or the pimp is really the victimizer. They're the ones who are using and abusing the prostitutes for their own commercial gain. 
Norma Jean got out of prison in 1988, working with a group known as Coyote, which stands for Call Off Your Old Tired Ethics. She believes American justice should decriminalize prostitution. Is society better off because the jails are filled up with prostitutes and who have solicited money for acts of sex they could have anyway? I don't think so. Norma Jean Almodovar and other advocates for prostitution rights would have us believe that as many as two million American women, most of them middle class, sell their bodies either as a career or just to make some money on the side. But police are the first to admit they have no idea how many prostitutes there are in this country. But they do know that most of them operate not on the streets, but for escort services or 